two students from the small Dutch town of Amersfoort, Chris Kramers and Lizanne Fran, have long wanted to visit Latin America. Their choice eventually fell on Panama. They planned a six-week trip, for the first two weeks they would stay in the resort province of Bocas del Toro, and then for the remaining four weeks they would go inland to the small village of Boquet, where there was a Spanish-language school aimed at European tourists. On March 15, 2014, the girls will arrive at Amsterdam Airport. The parents who saw the girls off will take a photo of their children before the long separation. Lizanne and Chris will pass through customs and disappear behind the doors of the waiting room. Their parents will never see them again. On April 1st, the girls decide to hike the El Pianista hiking trail and take lots of pictures while walking. A few hours later, for some reason, Chris and Lizanne make a call to 911. In the following days their phones continue to receive calls to 911 and 112, but strangely on the sixth day the PIN code on one of the phones found later starts to be entered incorrectly. But why? The last time their phones were found to be active was 11 days after they went missing. That day, one of the phones was on and off, but for good. Two and a half months later, the girl's backpack was found after which more questions were raised. Among other things, a Canon digital camera was found in the backpack. Later the police will retrieve pictures from this camera and learn the following. The first day of their hike the girls took daytime photos. But a week later, deep in the night, the camera will be turned on again and about 90 photos will be taken. Hundreds of thousands of people around the world are trying to understand the meaning of these photos and what they depict, but no one can give a logical and understandable explanation of these terrible photos, and maybe these pictures were not taken by the girls. But then who? In addition, only one photo was deleted from the camera and despite all the efforts of the police and experts it could not be recovered, but what was that photo? After the disappearance of the girls, some strange things were noticed in their room. Hundreds of threads with tens of thousands of posts and versions were discussed on various forums, all trying to find an answer to one question, what happened to Chris Kramers and Liz and Fran? Let's try to make sense of this creepy and confusing story together. For a deeper understanding of what happened, let's look at the chain of events that took place shortly before the girls disappeared. The girls visited the coast of Panama for the first time and had a good time in Bocas del Toro, learning a little Spanish, enjoying the beach, food, drinks, sightseeing and dancing in the evenings. There they met two young Dutch people with whom they spent a lot of time, as well as several young people from other countries. When Chris and Lizanne arrived at Boquit, it soon became clear that their plans had changed. The staff at the Garderia Ora Children's School informed them that they would not be able to work there that week as planned. The head of the children's school had other things to do elsewhere and they did not have the time or space for them. Despite earlier arrangements, the head of the school also complained later that she had difficulty understanding the girls because they did not speak Spanish. However, they understood her when she let them know that she didn't need volunteers. Chris and Lizanne were sent away. Unexpectedly given free time, they decide to devote it to traveling. With a local guide, Feliciano Gonzalez, they booked an escort for two hiking trips, on Wednesday April 2nd to the so-called Strawberry Farm located at the foot of Baru Volcano, and on Saturday directly to the volcano itself. On Tuesday April 1st, 2014, the girls went hiking on the El Pianista Trail which is a famous hiking trail that takes hikers up to the summit about 8 kilometers from Boquit and passes through hazy forest jungle and waterfalls. The girls informed their parents that they were going on a hike. A certain taxi driver Leonardo Mastinu stated that he dropped Chris and Lisan in the afternoon, around 1340, but the clock on their digital camera showed that they began their trek around 11 a.m. This is just one of many. Inconsistencies in this story. During the hike, the girls took a lot of photographs. Chris and Lizanne wore a light one that day. Clothes, 
shorts and t-shirts. They had a small backpack containing a passport, money, mobile phones, phones, digital camera, water bottles. Before the hike, local residents warned the girls not to go there alone, but the girls did not attach any importance to this. On April 2nd, Chris and Lizanne had an appointment with Feliciano Gonzalez. His services have already been paid for. The girls did not show up for the scheduled meeting. During the day, the guide will make inquiries at the Spanish language school and at the place of residence of the family where the girls are staying, and by the evening of the same day he will report his suspicions to the police. On the morning of April 3rd, the Panama police will begin search operations. After about a month, search efforts yield no results, neither the girls themselves, nor their remains, nor traces of blood were found. A reward of $30,000 was set for information about the whereabouts of Chris and Lizanne. Later, one of the Panamanian television channels added another $10,000 to this amount. Two and a half months later, on June 11, 2014, there was an unexpected twist in this story. Lizanne's blue backpack was found. The backpack was found by Irma Mirando, a resident of the village of Alto Romero. When she and her husband went to the Culebra River to wash things, the location of the discovery is quite far from the village. The backpack got caught on a branch and was under a stone. The position and condition of the backpack was such that it was not possible to clearly determine whether it had been left in this place or whether it had been carried by the current. As a result of various examinations of the found items, it will be established. The backpack itself will contain DNA from two unknown females, as well as two slightly incomplete male DNAs. Nevertheless, one of the men can be identified, but the police will not say who it is and how he left his genetic imprint on the girl's backpack. According to official data, more than a dozen different fingerprints will be found on the girl's mobile phones, according to unofficial estimates, 36. Remains of soil and plant material will also be found, according to the Dutch police. This material was never compared with the composition of the soil in the area. A new search operation was launched along the Culebra riverbed. On June 16, a black shoe was discovered. It belonged to Lizanne. The shoe was located near the riverbed, behind a tree. Part of Lizanne's leg was found in the boot, according to the police. It was separated as a result of natural processes. Hip bone, more precisely, part of it, she was found nearby. Also on June 16, subsequent DNA testing revealed that the bone belonged to Chris Kramers. Police assumed that the bone had been chewed off by predators, although no obvious signs of animal fangs were found on it. Blue Shoe it was discovered on June 18. Police initially believed the shoe belonged to Chris. However, no evidence of this, in the form of DNA examinations or other studies, was provided. Moreover, after deciphering the photographic material, it will become clear that Chris was wearing different shoes that day. Another strange thing, the jean shorts belonged to Chris. They were found at the end of June. They lay on a small rock near the mouth of two rivers. There were no traces of blood or tears on the shorts. Question, why take off your shorts in the jungle and leave them on a rock? Fun fact, there is a so-called swimming photo in which two girls resemble Chris and Lizanne in appearance. Could this be their last photo? The men in the photo were identified as 22-year-old Osman Valenzuela known as Piki, from Alto Boquit, and 21-year-old Jose Manuel Mergas. Osman Valenzuela was found dead on April 4, 2014 in the Chiriquizito River, just four days after the girls disappeared. His death was officially ruled an accidental drowning, and Jose Manuel Mergas, about a year later, on March 27, 2015, was hit by a passing car near the Caldera swimming area. The driver fled. It turns out that everyone depicted in the photo of the voyage died, but that's not all. Taxi driver Leonardo Mastinu, 
who told police he drove Chris and Lizanne to the El Pianista Trail on the morning of April 1st, was also found drowned under mysterious circumstances. This story contains more questions than answers. Why was it necessary to take about 90 photographs in complete darkness? What is the point of these strange photographs? Where did photograph number 509 go and who or what was in it? Why did Chris and Lizanne only call 911 without trying to contact family or friends? Did it happen as an accident or was it a murder? What actually happened in the jungles of Panama in April 2014 still remains unknown. Friends, write in the comments what do you think about this? Subscribe to the channel and like if you found it interesting.